to you 360 degrees around the earth from Southern Australia to Northern Ireland. You're listening or you're watching Midnight Radio. I'm your host, Gerald Schmemans. Today, tonight, if you will, it is Fruit Loop Friday. What are some things we're going to be going over today? I will tell you. We'll be going over some of the new, some new developments in the Idol 4K. So I think they're really important. I've been looking at them, and there's a reason why I'm going to bring them up, other than they just exist. I think it is a power struggle. It is a mind game that's going on, and we will go over that tonight. Before we begin everything else, I want to thank our our producer for this show, TD McCoy. Executive producer status for TD McCoy. Thank you very much for helping the show continue. If you'd like to help the show continue, any donation is much appreciated. It is Cash App Dollar Sign Midnight Radio One Zero One, or you can do a super uh, super sticker or a super thanks right there in the chat room. Thank you guys very much. And this is the way the show is going to go. First, we're going to go over. I don't for information I have, and I have other stories of some crazy, crazy true crime stories that happened around the United States. Everything's going to be available to our members, only to our members here on YouTube. Um, Other than that, I'm going to cut this off, probably just do the newest update on the Idaho four case and post that on YouTube for everybody generally. But this whole Fruit Loop Friday will be available later for members only or you can join our Spotify where you can get this whole show in its, what, 1080p or maybe 720? High definition, also high definition audio on Spotify. That's right, Spotify. If you haven't joined our Spotify, go ahead and do that. You can watch the podcast of the broadcast on there. Uh, you can just check out our About page. And the link is on there. Phone number is 325-261-0892. If you'd like to call in and talk about any of the stories we're going over tonight or what you think about the Idaho 4K. So do you think Brian Kohlberger did it? Do you think he didn't do it? Do you think it's obvious he did it? Do you think it's obvious he didn't do it? Or do you think he did it? Well, there's a lot of sloppy police work. That's what many people think like to hear from you 325-261-0892 325-261-0892 the phone line will be open through the entire broadcast beginning now all right first thing i want to do is go over the story about the auto 4 case and then we're going to go into the documents filed in court we're going to look at those ourselves i'd like to thank laura for helping me keep track of those because without her i wouldn't be able to that's for sure All right. Wow. This is fascinating. Check this out. This is where we're going to start. Um, No, not the P. Diddy story. I'd like to say hello to everybody in the chat room. Hello to Laura. Hello to Electra. Hello to Hot Ham. And where are you? Zoo Max. She's the first one here. I'd like to thank... Uh, welcome back to our member. Jen took it off. She took it off for a long time, and she continues to do so right here in our chat room, everybody. All right, check the story out. First of all, I'd like to show everybody the headline because they made a major mistake. Um, it said Judge Nix accused University of Iowa murder. It was University of Idaho, but we're con- going to continue to go over this. This is from a couple days ago. Brian Kohlberg's defense team is crying foul after a judge ordered both sides in the Idaho student murders case to stay away from potential jurors ahead of a change of venue hearing that could move the upcoming trial out of Latah County where the judge, where the slings happen. The late Friday afternoon filing was a strategic action by the state defense attorney, Ann Taylor. She wrote in a motion to rescind Judge John John's Judge is banned. She argued that a survey the defense was conducting on potential jurors met the legal standards warranted in a potential death penalty case. 
Taylor's arguing that because the order came before a hearing on the issue, the suspected quadruple murder, 14th Amendment's rights in to due process were violated. Both parties are prohibited from contacting potential jurors about this case, including via third parties until further order of this court. You would think that that would be common sense, don't you, ladies and gentlemen? I think it would be. Matter of fact, one can almost argue that the ability to contact potential, not jurors, but potential jurors, would almost taint the jury on purpose to cause a mistrial of your own client. Judge John Judge wrote in a short order on March 22nd. It is now March 29th. This is seven days old. Made public Monday evening. A hearing on this issue will be held as soon as practicable. That's the word, practicable. As soon as practical, they put practicable. David... uh, Gelman, a New Jersey-based defense attorney and former prosecutor, has been following the case, said the survey in dispute is part of the defense's effort to prepare for a change of venue hearing. In order to gather sufficient evidence to support their application, the defense retained an expert who sampled the potential jury pool to assess potential bias in Latak County. Have you heard of the Brian Kohlberger case? Have you heard of Idaho 4? This was done by way of a telephone survey of 400 residents. What kind of telephone surveys do you guys get? Uh, Extended warranties, maybe? If anybody had been called by the telephone survey, I'd love to hear from you. The phone number is on the screen right there. Taylor's office hired a social psychologist named Brian Eldman to conduct the polling in her filing. Taylor conceded many of Eldman's uh, questions about media influence are not factually correct. But Eldman wrote in a signed declaration that none of the questions included any information that was not widely reported and available to the public domain, which isn't a lot of information, is it? Lotel County Prosecuting Attorney Bill, Bushy Bill, Santa Claus Thompson, took issue with the questions which have not been made public and asked a judge to halt the survey last week in a motion filed, of course, under seal. According to the filings, Thompson accused the defense of violating a sealed court order regarding the survey by discussing case specifics and by disclosing information that would be inadmissible at trial. I wonder what information this was. Well, we're going to go over it. Maybe we'll find it in the court documents. The judge agreed, but Taylor is asking him to rescind the order so that the surveys can resume ahead of a hearing on the issue. The defense is not disclosing information, Taylor wrote to the court. The defense is asking prospective jurors in the county of Latal as to what information they are aware of that was previously disclosed vis-a-vis the press. Two things seem to favor the defense, Gelman said. First, the surveys do indeed appear to be about gathering information as opposed to disseminating information. Second, even if the motion to change venue were denied, any potential adverse impact upon the juror poll because of the survey will not will be not only negligible due to the small number of jurors contacted, but also addressable via Vord Dyer. What the hell that means? I don't know. During jury selection, the defense would have a chance to ask potential jurors if anybody asked them to discuss the case, whether that would impact their ability to be fair and Uh, impartial changes of venue can be rare but happen in high profile cases such as the double murder trials of idaho cult mom Lori Vallow and california scott peterson i think that this case is more notorious than those other two I definitely do. I highly doubt the defense did anything to run afoul of the court's order, and I think the defense is absolutely doing its due diligence, said Edwina Elox, a Boise-based defense attorney who previously represented Vallow. Hmm. The defense made a sound legal argument with respect to what they must establish for a change of venue. However, she said, the answer to concerns about the validity of the survey's questions is contained in the questions themselves. They have not been made public, but Eldman's declaration has. I think the defense expert backs up the reasoning behind the defense's strategy. Let's get to some of the comments. 
Shall we? Maybe we can. Let's see. Can we? Huh. I want to see some comments. Ah, here we go. Buzzy Body 19 says, The delay in prosecuting this case is beyond outrageous. It's about time that the victims receive the justice that is due them. Sodium Pen says, Supposedly Taylor is earning about $8,000 a week, $200 an hour. Defending Kohlberger, extending the legal process to get BK to trial would financially benefit her. Fascinating. It wouldn't hurt her, would it? Billable hours, not regular, eight through five hour shift. She also runs a public defender's office in Kutani. That doesn't look right. County. She's skilled. So is Judge Judge and so is Bill Thompson. Have every confidence that they will all just do it once and do it right. Goldberger must die of old age. First, at the rate of this case is going, <clears throat> here's what I heard, everybody. I heard that what we got now is. What we have now is uh, the trial is slated to be 12 months from now. That's right. Spring of next year, not now, uh, 12 months from now. Yes, uh, that is what I heard. That is what I heard. All right, let's look at, let's look at the documents, shall we? So the actual documents. Here we go. Court documents. This is your update. Are you going to be shocked? Let's find out. All right. Let's see how that looks to you guys. All right. You can read it right there. All right. <clears throat> in the district court of the second judicial district of the state of Idaho in and for the county of Latal. Notice is hereby given the Brian C. Kohlberger by and through his attorney, Ann C. Taylor, public defender, will call on for hearing. <laughs> the defense's fourth motion to compel in the above entitled matter on 5 14 24 at 1 30 p.m. or assumed thereafter, as counsel may have heard in front of Honorable Judge Judge, this is talking about the next hearing and the hearing on what? What we just went over? The hearing about whether or not they can send out questionnaires. Do you think they should be allowed to send questionnaires to potential jurors in Latah County? What they're trying to do is get a change of venue uh, somewhere else in Idaho, not a different state, but somewhere else in Idaho to judge what people know there in Idaho about this case. Do you think that should be allowed? Do you think that should be allowed? Crystal Amber says, what's the shocking update? Oh, my God. Stay tuned, Amber. Uh, Laura says, I'm disgusted in the whole shenanigans. Hope, Hello, all hope everyone is having a wonderful Easter. Hope you guys are. I really do. All right, let's continue with some more. Let's go over all these documents here. All right, so date 326. State of Idaho plaintiff versus Brian Kohlberger defendant is hereby given that Brian C. Kohlberger, by and through his attorney, S.C. Taylor, will call on for a hearing the defendant's fourth motion to compel. This looks just like the last one. Perhaps it's just a copy. Two of two. Another motion to compel. This is an answer. All right. Here's the answer. Hell no. We'll see what it says. Motion to rescind order for failure to provide due process. <clears throat> on Friday, March 22nd, 2024, late on a Friday afternoon, the state filed this motion to prevent contact with potential jurors. The motion included attachments. The late Friday afternoon filing 
was a strategic action by the state. The state was well aware of the survey taking place long before its late filing on March 22nd. Reading the state's filing, it is clear the state was aware of the survey process by March 8th. The state reached out to the defense council on March 19th and scheduled a meeting on March 21st. By the time the parties met on March 21st, the state had at least one transcript of the survey and knew the questions that were asked. At no time during the 13 days between March 8th and March 21st, did the state determine an emergency existed that must be brought to the court's attention, but... On March 21st, counsel for the state and defense met. The defense provided a a circulum vital for its expert and discussed the survey and its content. The defense informed the state surveys such as these were common practice. The state could have easily and likely did find that this very expert did similar survey work in Idaho on at least two other occasions. Uh, Lori Vallow. Scott Peterson, perhaps. Surveys such as these meet the standard of care required of the defense in a capital case, yet the state told the defense it wanted to tell the judge about this. The defense agreed to attend an on-the-record in-chambers meeting to discuss the defense work being done, all of which they also request be sealed, by the way. So this is close as we're going to get to hearing about that, everybody. All right, continuing. The state chose not to wait. Counsel asked the state to refrain from giving the attachments to the court prior to a meeting where the defense could be heard because the court may take an action, thus prohibiting Mr. Kohlberger an opportunity to be heard. Unfortunately, though, through its letter writing to the court, the state has achieved previous action from the court without Mr. Kohlberger receiving due process. The state knew what it was doing when it filed a late afternoon motion with attachments. Mr. Kohlberger quickly filed an objection and stated further information would be coming. The court issued an order halting defense work, giving Mr. Kohlberger any opportunity to be heard. This is a violation of Mr. Kohlberger's constitutional rights pursuant to the 14th Amendment of the United States Constitution. In Article 1, Section 13 of the Idaho State Constitution. Let's see if you guys also agree. The right to procedural due process requires that when a constitutionally protected interest is at stake, a person involved in the judicial process be given meaningful notice and a meaningful opportunity to be heard and that judicial proceedings be fundamentally fair. It seems very broad to me not exactly pinpointing sending out a survey for potential jurors let's continue the opportunity to be heard must occur at a meaningful time and in a meaningful manner in order to satisfy the due process requirement according to Aberdeen and Springfield and it's citing the cases above at a bare minimum there must be some process to ensure that the individual is not arbitrarily deprived of his rights In violation of the state or federal constitutions, this requirement is met when the defendant is provided with notice and an opportunity to be heard. For the court to take action without ensuring Mr. Kohlberger has an opportunity to be heard stops the defense from preparing to meet its deadline for filings in support of its motion for change of venue. The order demands Mr. Kohlberger in carrying out his work to ensure a properly prepared defense and ensuring a fair trial by an impartial jury. The order also prejudices the state because the survey work is complete for Latah County, but it is not complete in other counties for comparison. No court order should be entered without procedural due process or unless the parties stipulate. Dated this 26th day of March, 2024. And then the certificate of delivery, etc., etc., I want to know how some of you feel. Um, I'm going to go to the comments section to see. Crystal says, Bill Thompson needs to be sanctioned for not doing his job. Uh, Laura says, just curious to, as to why you said, I'm curious too, Crystal. Bill Thompson needs to be sanctioned for not doing his job. Do you mean because he didn't let them know earlier that he was going to oppose the, um, what do you call it? The robo calls, or because 
of him trying to shut it down. That's what I want to know. Either way, uh, I just want clarification on that. Laura also states this, which is very interesting. I feel even if he came here to Northern Ireland for a trial, it would be, still be hard to put a jury together. I don't disagree with that. Bill Thompson needs to be sanctioned for not doing his job. Again, Crystal, I don't disagree. Backdoor bill. Oh, oh. Alibi doesn't change. Alibi is straight fact. Why hold it? All right, so we got more documents to go over here. Ann Taylor is saying this, two things, saying that it's her responsibility to make sure that this trial is fair, that he's giving all of his rights, and one of the things she needs to do is to meet the requirements set forth for a change of venue, and to do that in the time that she's allotted, and one of the things she needed to do was to have this survey, this robocall survey, for potential jurors here in Latah County, or Latah, whatever it is, We say things different in Texas. She's saying that's what she needs. Bill Thompson is saying, hey, this is contacting potential jurors, and you can't do that. But also, Judge Judge is saying the same thing. Uh, Also, Bill Thompson, and this is what really pisses me off if you look at all this, and maybe it should you too, Mm. You can't even have an opinion on it because they sealed the questions that were asked to the potential juries. They already sent out those robocalls and contacted a bunch of people. We don't know what was even said because it's been sealed by Bill. That's all Bill does is seal. Uh, Like it happens in no other case anywhere. We're going to go over some cases later that are just over-the-top crazy. Over the top crazy. And none of it's been sealed anywhere. But it's different in Idaho. Different in Idaho. I used to think weird things happen in Germany, weird things happen in Florida, but Idaho is a thing unto itself. Uh, All right. Here's some clarification from Amber before we head on. Ann Taylor just says everything she's asking for. So ridiculous. Brian needs to have a proper and fair trial. It's just odd. It feels like backseat billing the judge working to get his not watch his name's going to be back see billy i almost don't want to know why so what do you guys think before before we go on here real quickly what do you think about brian actually of committing the murder would you be satisfied if when he goes to trial by jury of his peers um it is found that he is guilty and Perhaps we're giving more information. Hell, everything's been sealed. We just have breadcrumbs. How do you feel about everything being sealed for him to have a fair trial? How do you feel about change of venue for him to have a fair trial? How do you feel about all these things being done to give him a fair trial when if in fact, I'm not saying he is because nobody can Nobody can say he's guilty until he goes through trial and they're given all the information. Nobody can say that. Nobody can say he's guilty either. They can't say he's innocent. But if that day comes and he is, how do you feel about the guilty person having all these benefits that the people who were murdered by the murderer were not given? They were given the death penalty on a whim. And if, in fact, it is Brian although there's been nobody else even a, as a suspect of interest. If it is Brian, it was on a whim, just because he could, just because he thought he could, just so he could fulfill some potential in himself that he wasn't getting through academics as his life, his academic life was spiraling out of control, but by God, I can do it, he thought. If, in fact, he did do it, you know, I could do this crime and I can take out more than one. I can take out a bunch of people and I won't be convicted just because I can. If in fact he did, which nobody can say, they, I mean, we can have, everybody can have opinions, but nobody can say for sure until that day at the end of his trial. When the judge asks jury, 
How do you plead? Need more info and too much stalling. I feel bad for the families of the victims. I do too. Most of all, I do feel bad for the families of the victims. Okay, let's move on here. This is a place where we stop and we organize our thoughts. That is what we have here. It's an organization of thoughts. In the District Court of the 2nd Judicial District of the State of Idaho, memorandum in support of the objection to the state's motion for ordering prohibiting contact. Maybe we can find out some more information here. Slipping through the cracks beyond backdoor bill. Let's see. Come now, Brian C. Kohlberger, by and through his attorney of record, Nancy Taylor, public defender, and hereby submits this memorandum in support of objection to the state's motion for ordering prohibiting contact with prospective jurors absent leave of the court. Telephonic surveys to explore the media stories a juror population has been exposed to is not a violation of this court's revised order. The state has alleged that the defense has violated the court's revised order. Specifically, the state alleges the defense has violated the prohibition on discussing the identity or nature of evidence expected to be presented at trial or any other sentence phase of the proceedings. Hmm. Hmm. Well, that does look true. Also, the order also prohibits the disclosure of any information a lawyer knows or reasonably should know is likely to be inadmissible evidence in trial. And that would, if disclosed, create a substantial risk of prejudicing an impartial jury. So they're asking things about, what have you learned from the media? What have you learned from those crazy smacker jackers on YouTube, those Fruit Loops? Exactly. Are you a Fruit Loop? The defense is aware of these prohibitions after all. The defense wrote the original order upon which it is based. The state, however, misunderstands the prohibition in this respect. The defense is not disclosing information. The defense is asking prospective jurors in the the county of Lata as to what information they are aware of that was previously disclosed, vis-a-vis the press. How is that possible on a robocall? All right, um... Go ahead. Have you or your family members heard about the Brian C. Kohlberger charges that he was charged with, the murders he was charged with? Yes or no. Have you heard this from YouTube? Yes or no. Have you heard this from local TV? Yes or no. Did you hear he used a K-bar? Yes or no. I mean, how did they do that? After the beep, leave your message of what you heard and who you heard it from. We're not going to be able to answer that, but as important for what they're asking here and the stipulations of these court orders, but thanks to Boner Backdoor Bill, Boner Bill from now on, thanks to Boner Bill, um, it's blacked out, all right? It is sealed. That's what pisses me off out of, out of all of this is the amount of sealing that is done. Further, the revised order for non-dissemination allows for counsel to ask questions of the public to do its work. That is exactly what happened. To do its work. I just want to say, stop and say thank you, uh, thank you and hello to Lisa Maxwell. All right. Continuing here. Yeah. Mr. Kohlberger, in his preparation for his change of venue hearing, is mindful of what the court must consider in the available means to obtain information for his evidentiary hearing. Idaho, Idaho Criminal Rule 21 In relevant case law, guide the factors a court must consider in a motion to change venue. Good. Inform us, educate us on that. The state's motion, the court's order, intrudes on one of the ways the defense will seek to establish prejudice pursuant to ICR 21. It outlines relevant factors a court must consider when taking up a change of venue. 
motion prior to attempting to seat a jury. Extensive publicity, accuracy of publicity, and the size of the community from which a jury would be drawn. The Haddon Court is referencing the size of the county as well as being small, said, however, the fact alone does not require the presumption of prejudice, nor would such a rule be practical given the relatively rural nature of many of Idaho's counties. The Hayden Court also said a party challenging venue must bring more than the size of the community. Certainly, pervasive media coverage that continues to this day is a factor and will be discussed in a later filing. The focus here is on critical survey work, obtaining information to support the change of venue motion by establishing the more in addition to size of community. This important work will be establishing the reasonable probability of prejudice. To provide the more, the defense hired Dr. Brian Edelman, owner of Trial Innovations. Dr. Edelman is an experienced doctor of social psychology with additional educational achievement and experience in statistical surveys is likely it likely will help to understand how surveys are done in cases such as this the survey to be valid must be done by a random selection of contacts the number of surveys are small but enough to see trends that are attributed to a larger population for those of you that took statistics in college you notice the number one thing about statistics is Uh, With an educated person, statistics can be manipulated to get the answer you want. Know that. See declaration of Dr. Edelman attached as Exhibit A. We will. The questions in the survey seek limited but important information. To qualify, the surveyor first asks if the person reached is an adult and a Latow County resident. Then the survey continues with opinion, exposure, and connection to the case questions. Dr. Edelman... After extensive research of the media coverage in this case and with approval of counsel, designed the media influence questions around statements that have been in the media. As counsel for the state wrote in their motion, many of the media influence questions are not factually correct. Interesting. Like what? The question, did you hear this from the media? And these are things that are not factually correct. That's interesting. This is exactly the point. This is what the Haddon Court said in relation to extensive media coverage. Not factual media dissemination is more harmful. So they don't want to call it lies. Lies! It would be part of little, it would be of little use to this court to know that there was a deluge of unobjectionable media coverage. Hmm. The only way for this court to have a way of understanding what the parties would face with a juror, with a juror from Latow County is to know what they're being exposed to as Dr. Edelman can testify. That is the sort of work parties do in these cases. It may be new to some in Latow County, but it's still the industry standard professional ethical way to do work. So this is very interesting. We're learning of the flavor of what these questions might have been like. And they're not, they are saying, have you heard this? Did you hear this from the news media? But perhaps it's not the mainstream news media. It's from the alternative news media. Did you hear about the steam tunnels? Did you hear about I and Harsh being the perpetrator of the murders? Enon. 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 Have you heard about Enon? Did you hear about... uh, the suicide of the the vets. Did you did you hear? Are these the kind of questions that were asked? When or if ever we're going through this now, and this is just you know pre jury selection, and they're just sending this out to a bunch of people that may be in the jury in that county to see if trying to get information they need to move it. Uh, Are we ever going to get a release on what these questions were? Because I would be so interested to go over those. As Dr. Edelman can testify, that is the sort of work parties do in these cases. It may be new to some in Latow County, but it is still the industry standard professional and ethical way to do this work. There is no realistic possibility. (laughs) Sorry, everybody. My lungs have been damaged forever. There's no realistic possibility possibility that this will affect the jury selection in Latah County. The problems with this county are not the defense is making. Oh, okay. Boner bills, maybe? They are what the defense wishes to expose for this court. The state motion uh, 
is filed against the backdrop of Mr. Kohlberger preparing for his motion to change venue. I'm going to read this one more time. There's no realistic. All right, go back. The problems with this county are not of the defense's making. I respectfully disagree to that. Why do I disagree? Because we argued from the beginning that having this trial in secrecy, which is having big parts of it uh, closed, having big parts of it sealed, would do nothing but add to speculation. The defense agreed to this, and the uh, prosecution agreed to this, so I would argue that this is their making. Both of them is the court system of Idaho's making, and that is what's discussed, many of us, as we're looking through um, from these different states in America that don't do this bullshit. They don't do it. But Idaho's acting like it's normal when it is not. They're causing the problem, and look, they're trying to sell you the solution. And um, it's, it's very odd, this right here, because just as a, uh, the court filing that we read before this, And uh, Ann Taylor says her and Bill were in collusion, complete and total agreement. And she was just taken, uh, you know, out of left field that he said no to this. You know, he acted like he was in on it because everything they do, they've been in collusion with. And yet this is one of his tactics. He argues um, with her and points her out, you know, things that they agreed on before in court. That's why they call him backdoor bill. They are what the defense wishes to expose for this court conclusion. The state's motion is filed against the backdrop of Mr. Kohlberger preparing for his motion to change venue. The state objected to the court scheduling a change of venue hearing. And now through this motion is thwarting the defense preparation for the motion. The state knows counsel for Mr. Kohlberger did not violate the revised non-dissemination order. The state and counsel met the day before the state filed this motion and discussed the content of the survey and received the curriculum for the expert hired by the defense. This is what they're saying. Bill, Bill is involved in this. Bill agreed. Bill said it was good. And then right in the back door, the state's motion should be denied and the order prohibiting future contact with the prospective jurors should be withdrawn. What thank you, audience? What do you think? Mikey says, the whole country is dependent on this case to be closed in the university to thrive. The jobs, business, the whole county. Businesses, their livelihood, they need to move this. I have no problem with them moving out of Lataw County. I have no problem. Indiana just loses the evidence. Yeah. Jetta from Texas says, thank you for covering all these docs and not just snips and pieces, plus bonus commentary. I love it. You are a lady of taste, Jetta. Prosecutor Billy blindsided them a day after acting all cozy with A.T. Daler. What a snake. Yeah, and it's not the first time he's done that, uh, Mikey. He's done that every time. There was, um, let's see, which hearing was it? It was the one for the genetic testing. And he said that she was misrepresenting what she, she was misrepresenting what genetic testing can do. And, you know, he dogged her in court about that and she blew up. He's like, we just talked about this a few days ago. Back door bill. Mike, yes, says they are in medieval times. Death by bulls is crazy to me. State and alibi, and that contradicts right to remain silent. All right, let me look through my other. Okay, here's a declaration of Brian Eldman. Do you guys want to go over this? Uh, It's not too big. Yes, it is. It's freaking huge, actually. I still want to read some of it, though. I, Brian Elderman, solemnly, sincerely, and truly declare and affirm as follows. I am the co-founder of Trial Innovations, a 
National Full Service Jury Research Firm, I have worked as a trial consultant for 20 years and have conducted pre-trial and post-trial research in both criminal and civil cases across the country. I've been retained as an expert in over 70 high-profile cases to assess the impact of pre-trial, of pre-trial publicity on the fairness of trial proceedings, including the state of Idaho versus Jonathan Rafino, state of Idaho versus Gilberto Rodriguez, state of Colorado versus James Holmes. Oh, that crazy bastard. United States versus Robert Bowers, state of Florida versus Nicholas Cruz, and United States versus David DePap. Counsel for the defendant in the state of Idaho versus Brian Kohlberger retained me to research and evaluate, one, whether there was extensive and prejudicial pretrial publicity surrounding the killings of four students attending the University of Idaho in Moscow, the community panic that ensued, and the search for a suspect, which ended with Brian Kohlberger's arrest. Two, determine if the media coverage has impacted the defendant's ability to obtain a fair and impartial trial in the county. Three, whether community residents in alternative venues exhibited similar bias. And four, based on the findings, recommend appropriate remedial measures. For example, a change of venue to protect Mr. Kohlberger's ability to be tried by a fair and impartial jury. As part of my analysis, I evaluated relevant newsprint, television, and social media coverage surrounding these events and conducted a community attitude survey of 400 residents in Latow County. This is something they talked about. We're going to have to interview 400 people. We talked about that in our last episode here on YouTube. They were talking about the survey, apparently. Comparison surveys in alternative venues have yet to be completed. These surveys were designed to assess case recognition, familiarity with prejudicial media content, and bias. And you know it was biased towards him being guilty. <clears throat> so what are some of the rumors we heard about him being guilty and evidence they found that is not necessarily factual? Qualifications, education experience, I don't care. I'm sure he has the utmost. Research experience, I don't care about your jury research experience. Mm. He has consulted with the courtroom and assisted with jury selection on more than 100 cases. Served as a presenter at local bar associations, law firms. Okay, uh, venue experience. And I have conducted analysis of media coverage on a host of topics and have designed more than 50 community attitude surveys over the years. I've been retained as an expert to conduct and evaluate change of venue studies and also to recommend remedial measures for addressing exposure to pretrial publicity of a change of venue. Expert witness experience. Interesting. I've been retained as an expert witness on matters including freedom of religion in China. <clears throat> Eyewitness identification and change of venue. I've testified as an expert witness in person or by declaration in California, Idaho, Colorado, Tejas, Mex, uh, Mex, Michigan, Florida, Massachusetts, Nevada, Pennsylvania, Tennessee, West Virginia, and Washington. In the majority of cases, I've been retained to conduct a change of venue study. So other... So let's say that they, some people really believe that they need a change of venue because it's saturated in their community. Okay, I'll buy that. But other than that, ladies and gentlemen, tell me what reasons you think they would want the venue changed. Because it stalls? I mean, what actually all is at play here? What is uh, what would be a good reason to have it changed? The venue. Are they trying to stall? Is that one of the reasons? Oh, Lord. What new evidence? I love this. I love this. What new evidence? Um, I don't know what you're referring to. Are you referring to the title? Have you been watching since the first? What? What?
All right. Continuing here. The influence of attitudes on cognition. And this is actually interesting for those of you that aren't aware of this. There's a substantial body of literature documenting the impact of attitudes on information processing. Attitudes on the way you process information. So things might seem different from you based on your attitude. All right? You know, some people swear that Brian did it. It's going to be an open, shut case once the trial starts. And there's people that think that there's been a lot of shoddy police work. There's people conspiring in the background. Uh, They're part of the system to make it look like it was Brian and covering something up. This is part of attitude recognition. How attitude changes your information processing because some people have been messed over by the system. Uh, Some people even work in the system. Some people work in different aspects of the system and knows it's not exactly the same as what's being portrayed to the public. So you have different attitudes based on your life experience or the way you've been trained from your family or whatever. Attitudes have been shown to have an impact on selective attention, the evaluation of new information, memory recall, and behavior. This research provides insight into how media coverage may lead to juror bias. Pre-trial publicity can have a prejudicial effect on jurors through its impact on the formation of attitudes and beliefs that they bring into the courtroom. Attitudes are not isolated entities, but are often linked to other memories, experiences, attitudes, and beliefs. These links can create large networks of attitudes, which are resistant to change. The links between attitudes strengthen with repeated activation. As these links strengthen, the probability increases that the attitudes and underlying beliefs will be consistent with one another and brought to awareness simultaneously. Attitudes that are strongly linked to one another are more easily accessible in memory and more likely to be automatically activated with exposure to the attitude object. Attitudes can be activated automatically without any consciousness. Intentional processing. This is more likely to occur when an attitude has been repeatedly activated in the past. When media coverage surrounding a case is broad, extensive, and redundant, Strong links between relevant attitudes and beliefs begin to form. If the pretrial publicity creates links between case details, attitudes, and beliefs over the course of a trial, these attitudes are likely to be automatically activated at a subconscious level. As described below, this network of linked attitudes can have an impact on a juror's attention to an evaluation of the evidence and arguments presented in court. As a network of linked attitudes grow and strengthen, specific attitudes become resistant to change because change requires revisions to other attitudes and beliefs within the network. Resistance, this is actually kind of like brainwashing. They're saying that you dumb people in Latau County are brainwashed or you're possibly brainwashed. So we need to see which one of you are smart and believe that our client is innocent. This is what I'm seeing. And they're willing uh, to retain this guy to make sure. Resistance to revising well-established attitudes have been shown to lead to biased information processing. When attitudes are strong, there is a tendency to favor arguments and information in support of those attitudes over arguments that may disprove them. I would say regardless of the validity, but hey, uh, the acceptance of a counter argument can create cognitive dissonance in an effort to avoid cognitive dissonance. Information that supports attitudes may be selectively attended to and counter arguments may be distorted or dismissed. Attitudes can also have an impact on attention and recall. Research has shown that information that supports a pre-existing attitude is easier to learn, more accurately retained, and easier to recall. The links form between additionally, adunally, adunally, that's a word for the day, attitudinally, supporting information in pre-existing attitudes are stronger than those formed between counter-arguments in pre-existing attitudes. Political much? As a result, the latter is more difficult to retrieve from memory. Further, there is a tendency to produce new beliefs which support pre-existing attitudes and suppress those that run counter to such attitudes. In some, when a venue is exposed to prejudicial media coverage surrounding a crime, there is a risk that potential jurors will develop a large network of linked attitudes and beliefs 
which is something a speechwriter or media propagandist is trying to do. Of linked attitudes and beliefs relating to the victim, the defendant, and the crime, these linked attitudes include opinions about the guilt of the defendant, appropriate sentence and evaluations of the evidence presented through the media. When the links between attitudes are strong, they can be activated at a subconscious level and have an impact on jurors' evaluation of the evidence and arguments presented at trial. Additionally, supporting arguments will be more closely attended to, evaluated as pers- persuasive, integrated into the existing network of attitudes and beliefs and made easily accessible during deliberations. In contrast, counter-arguments and evidence conflicting with well-established attitudes may create cognitive dissonance. As a result, jurors will either ignore the evidence or make cognitive efforts to refute it. This evidence will not establish strong links to pre-existing attitudes and will not be easily accessible during deliberations. But a venue has been saturated with pre-trial publicity. These psychological processes can put the defendant at a significant disadvantage, undermine the presumption of innocence, and diminish the prosecution's burden of proof. The prejudicial impact of pre-existing attitudes is accentuated by the fact that the media coverage underlying them is often biased in favor of the prosecution. Furthermore, news content is encoded under very different circumstances from, from those found in the courtroom because the rules of evidence that are strictly enforced at trial do not apply. As such, the pervasive impact of information presented through the news media becomes more significant and ingrained in the juror's mind than the evidence presented at trial. All right. Let's go to the Let's go to the comment section. Uh, Zumax says, Saul employed to murky the waters. <clears throat> Good answer. A.T. and Taylor is stalling. Okay. New judge may be a reason. Maybe. Why go to PA when he was right there? Laura makes it seem like Ann was... One trying to come through the back door. There's a, isn't there a song about the back door? Jetta was a deliberate statement. They use words carefully, and it's a question I had too. Pickle players have conflict of interest. Pickle ball players. Mm. Anytime a prosecutor treats football games and university inconvenience more important than the victim's families and plans dates around that, it's enough reason to move the trial, in my opinion. It's crazy. Move home games to another stadium is a bad look where everything that's happened or perceived so far. Hmm. Move trial to where? What will moving trial really achieve? Laura's been saying that this trial... This trial, this case has been so much in the public view, there's no way, no place it could be that wouldn't be prejudiced at this point. Jen says it is typical for defense to solicit the public like this. Maybe she should spend more time reading over documents and creating more. Literally bury scene of the crime in a junkyard in a risk and the university is too influential, in my opinion, and that's a risk for nothing. Oh, witnesses instead of jurors. Good question. Backdoor Joe. Or Bill. Backdoor Bill. Literature suggests that pretrial publicity influence evaluations of the defendant, perceptions of criminality, sympathy towards the defendant, pretrial judgments regarding guilt and final verdicts. A telephone survey of 400 residents was conducted in Latak County. The sample size of 400 was calculated via power analysis to reach an industry standard of 95% confidence, plus or minus 5%, using the most conservative response distribution. 
Comparative surveys were planned in two alternative counties to assess if any potential bias found in Alachua County carried over to the rest of the state. The survey instrument used in this case adheres to industry standards established by the American Association of Public Opinion Research and the Change of Venue Survey Professional Code established by the American Society of Trial Consultants. The survey instrument topic of focus and questions were constructed after reading more than 269 articles that reference the murders in Moscow, Pullman Daily News, Idaho, Argonaut, and the Spokesman Review. Steps were taken regarding the structure and flow of the instrument and design of the questions to mitigate potential threats to internal validity, including response bias and order effects. All the questions in the survey instrument, including the media recognition items criticized by the government, were carefully selected based on how pervasive each item was in the coverage. None of the media recognition items included any information that was not widely reported and available in the public domain. The rest of the survey instrument focused on respondents' opinions of the defendant, prejudgment, and experiences during the search for a suspect. The survey measured residents' exposure to media coverage, the extent of their case, knowledge, and their opinions regarding the research. The survey was conducted by Research Strategies Incorporated, a consumer public opinion and business-to-business market research firm for 36 years. I want to know how many questions, not how many questions did they ask these people, and how many people, somebody calls you, you're there in Idaho, I would like, please stand by, we would like to ask you about the Brian Kohlberger. How many of you, if they called you, would stay there and listen to this and answer their questions? Hit one, and if you know about this, the court granted a change of venue largely based. Okay, um, um, the survey design methodology I used in this case comports with surveys I have presented in numerous other cases for which courts have found to be valid and objective when considering the need to change venue. For example, in California versus Quentin Ray Beeler. The court granted a change of venue based on findings from my telephone survey, which were cited throughout the decision, stating that Dr. Eldman appeared to use a measured objective analysis of the bias for a change of venue. Hmm. I told you, uh, Dr. Elman appears to use a measured objective analysis of the basis for a change of venue. The, Beeler court also found me to be an experienced expert in the area of change of venue and United States versus Sublin. The court concluded that the potential for influence creating bias is apparent as reflected in Dr. Eldman's survey. Indeed, Dr. Eldman's survey shows actual bias in more than half the potential jury pool. The notion that polling 400 community residents, 1% of the County population 18 and over is the cause of potential bias in the county that has been saturated with hundreds of highly prejudicial newspaper articles, television news stories, and social media posts is not credible. Unlike the media, individual residents do not serve as a communication channel for disseminating information across the county. There is no evidence that conducting the survey has had any impact on the master list of prospective jurors or potential veneer in this case. The survey in Lawtaw County has already been completed. It is my opinion, unless the government is willing to concede the point and weigh the issue, that it is necessary to complete comparison surveys in alternative venues. This is the only method for demonstrating that there are counties in Idaho that are significantly less biased against the defendant than Lawtaw County. And he declares that everything he's saying is true. Did that give anybody a headache? <clears throat> she and through the bathroom window with a spoon in her hand. Oh, talking about a song. Hell, what do we really know? Not too much. How can there be bias? Hopefully they have more than we know. Uh, comment of the night. What do we really know? That's the problem, Lisa. Some of us are like that. What do we really know? The information I got wasn't very damn much. The information I've been passing along is everything everybody says. But we have a list of the actual information that we compare it to and we get real information. 
And um, what do we really know? I would answer, but I like to talk to all telemarketers. I'm really lonely. Be appeals for decades and just avoid the issue. It's reasonable argument if convicted just delays everything. If they sequester, it should be fine, but in my opinion, but accommodations might be an issue. All right, let's go over the other news stories I have of the night. 